everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, as you can see here in front of me, I have three very large 35th scale tanks. And in fact, um, I think a better word would be massive tanks. Uh, they are really, really big, and you can tell by the size of the boxes. To start off with, we have our Japanese 150 ton Super Heavy. This is a beast of a tank multiple uh, turrets all over it, plus it has four metal barrels inside of it as well. Uh, we also have the VK-168P. This is another German super heavy tank. And finally, we have this one right here, the Type 205. And basically what this translates to right here is Little Mouse. So it's a, a similar shape and form to the, the mouse, the regular mouse that they actually built. So today I'm gonna open all these up pull them apart, let you see all the parts inside there. They are all going to be released from the factory this month in October. Uh, Mid-October is when the date is supposed to be done, and we should have them probably in about four to six weeks. So uh, they're on their way very, very soon. So we've got a lot to look at in here right now. So let's get started. Okay, let's first take a look at the brand new 35th scale 150 ton Japanese super heavy tank. And I tried looking up a little information on this and from what I was able to find is they did, the Japanese, create a 120 ton version, very similar to this, that they were experimenting with. But they said that they built one prototype of it uh, and it was never seen again after that. And this, so this is more or less a paper panzer version of it, of a larger um, more powerful tank, bigger, thicker armor. So at 150 tons, you can imagine it's a massive, massive vehicle. Now this is a uh, special kit that it has four different turrets on it. And in those four turrets, there are four metal barrels that are included in the kit. And something that I find quite interesting is all of the ladders that are on the side of the, uh, the superstructure there, I, I guess, so everybody can run all at once and jump and climb into this tank being that it's so large i guess you would need a you know rather than have a, a ladder thrown on the side if they're welded to the side it's easy for the crew to get in and out because based on also what i read there was an 11 man crew in this uh in this tank and that was to operate all of the cannons and all the other things and it would have two v12 engines inside to power this this beast so now that you got a little history on the, the vehicle, let's take a look inside. Okay, so let's jump right in and take a look at the parts. And the very first part we're going to look at is the massive top part of the hull. And you can see this is the front of the vehicle, and this is where the first two turrets would be. The main turret, and then it had a smaller turret in the back. Give you an idea on size compared to my hand here fold up we'll keep this out too this is the the lower hull and it would be sitting right up on top of here because you also have our sides here as well and once you see some of the the bolt detail on these just like that so you can imagine that piece being molded right into there you will get one very, very large tank. So those are the three main components, or actually I should say four, because there's two on that. Four main components that make up the, uh, the lower hull, the upper and lower hull. Next, we're gonna take a look at tracks. And uh, needless to say, there's a decent number of tracks in here. And you'll see how they go together here. One thing I'm quite surprised about for a tank that was going to be this large is that the tracks are not bigger. Um, you can see that there's some other pieces of them, and they're they're decently sized. But when you think about a 150 ton tank and the ground pressure that it would put out, you would think that these tracks probably would not be large enough to hold such a massive thing, at least in any type of you know soft ground. Um, hard ground that's one thing, but in soft this thing would probably be sinking down. So here's your set of tracks here. And because it's a very large vehicle, you're gonna actually get four sprues that are set up for the track pieces. And next up, we have our wheels, drive sprocket, some of the other accessories. So we have some slide molding right here on the side. 
just like that. All of our road wheels, giant drive sprocket there. Oh, actually, I should show you this side, I guess. This is where all the detail is. There we go. And with this sprue, there are two of them inside the kit. One for each side with the road wheels. Next up, we have the bottom and top of our main turret. And also, something that TACOM is starting to do more and more in their kits is include a figure. And you'll notice here, hopefully we can put my hand behind it here and see if you can see the detail, a slide molded face on the figure. I like having the figures in there too because it is a great way to show size on a vehicle too. Um, when you hold it up against to the size of it. Next up, we have our other parts of the kit here. These are all of the ladders that I showed you about. Some more slide molding done right here. And there is plastic barrels inside of here, but uh, not to worry, they, they do include the metal barrel too. And I guess that's always in the case that if you accidentally lose one of the barrels, you still always have a backup on here. So you'll get two slide molded barrels. These are the small turrets, the ones that go in the front. This is the half of the main gun, and this is the one for the rear on it here. So as you would imagine, you're gonna get two sprues of that to make all of your front turrets as well as the barrels for all of that. Next up, we have this sprue. This is our main turret right here. This is for the main turret, and then this is for the rear turret on there. Just like that. And finally, the last sprue is this one here. This has got some of the, uh, looks like it would be mufflers or something like that on it. Some of the other little accessories. And lastly, that comes in the kit, here are all of the accessories. So we've got our four metal upturned aluminum gun barrels. We've got a, a sheet of decals here, uh, a couple different ways with the uh, different numbers that you can put on it there. And also the clear parts that are included with the kit. And always, I will show you the instructions now to see if you do decide to get this kit, what you're in for as of building. Uh, not too, too many different parts. There's a lot of duplicate of parts, you know, like tracks and building multiple turrets and stuff, but it doesn't look to be too difficult just by looking at the parts. But let's see what the instructions have to say about that. Here is a breakdown of all the parts that are included in the kit. And then now I'll just show you each one of the steps, how they go together. And there you go, eight simple steps and you have the entire vehicle put together there. And then it's just a matter of going ahead and doing weathering and painting, things like that on it. Here are the, the two different uh, prototype styles that they have. Let's see, is there, oh no, there's actually a couple more. I take that back. Here are the first two paint schemes. Actually some kind of cool looking paint schemes there too. And finally, probably more of like a prototype one with an all gray and then like a, a whitish gray it looks like there. So there you go guys there's a look at the 150 ton Japanese super heavy tank. Now we're going to take a look at the TACOM 35th scale VK168.01 P for Porsche super heavy tank. Now, uh, before we start talking about this tank right here, I'm just gonna point out that this tank and the very next kit that we're gonna show you, which is kit number 2159, the uh, Type 205, they share quite a few of different parts. The main difference is if you look up here in the corner, you'll see that the, uh, the turret is very far forward on this particular tank. And then if I bring this one out and we show you the Type 205, you'll notice that the hull and everything are, are similar. Uh, but the turret is moved way far back on this one. And both of these were developments that they were 
very early on of the mouse project. Um, in fact, the other one is called the little mouse on there. And obviously they just, the Germans decided just to go ahead and make the monster kit, the mouse, which was just a ridiculous amount of weight. Now on this one right here, you'll notice the tracks are very, very large on here, but there's actually two sets of tracks side by side on here. So unlike the Japanese tank that I just showed you a little while ago, where they had the very thin tracks, this one is actually going to have four sets of tracks on it very very large obviously and you know for the ground pressure i believe this was going to weigh about 140 to 150 tons and actually porsche did create plans for this and they were presented um, in late october of 1942 but it never got any further past the actual blueprint stage deciding just to move forward with the actual mouse project so now that i've talked a little bit about that let's take a look at the parts inside Okay, so let's start off with the uh, the lower hull. I guess, in a way, this is kind of a bathtub style hull. <laughs> it's got very large uh, tops of the sponson right here, but uh, technically, I guess that is a bathtub. Uh, different looking, for sure. And that is because the tracks were so wide on this particular vehicle. So there is our lower hull. Next up, we have, very similar to the way the mouse was made, the big, thick sides that would go on here now these are you can see the the welds on here how thick the the front plate would have been very very massive steel i'll flip this over let you see how that is so that would be the sides of the vehicle and this is one of the main different pieces between the two kits so you see here we've got our big engine deck here and then the area where the turret is going to be so the turret is definitely forward on this vehicle once you take a look at some of the detail, I like that they're adding in this wiring for the, uh, the electronics on the outside, like the lights, things like that, already molded into it. Big, big boy. Now we're going to take a look at the turret. And the turret is done with slide molding. So you can see they got that, that curved shape. And from what I was able to read, Krupp actually designed the turret on this. And very similar to the way the Krupp um, early King Tigers would have been too, with that rounded shape right there. But think about the amount of time and effort it takes to create that curve to get it all lined up. It was a lot more of the production process that they weren't probably counting on. There we go, so there is our turret. Now I'm going to show you the tracks. Now remember, they are side-by-side -side tracks. They are rubber bands too. And I'll show you, you get quite a few of them as you can imagine here. And these are nice too because there is a metal pin that will actually attach all of these together. So I guess we've got what? Four for each side. So yep, four for each side on the track. I'll let you look a little bit closer at the top and bottom there for it. Just like that. Here are some spare tracks for the side of the vehicle. And also we have our drive sprockets. And our road wheels and all those little parts. You will actually get, actually that's a different one right there. This is the actual road, the regular road wheels. So you can see how many of those you get. And you also get two sprues of that. So there's our drive sprockets and all of our road wheels. And you also get the suspension pieces, which are these unusual looking pieces right here. And there'll be two sprues of that in the kit. And the last sprue we have here are like the tow cables, cleaning cleaning kit, the MG, and of course the barrel. Now the barrel is a two-halfer, as you can see here. It's, it's molded in two separate pieces. It would have been nice if this would have been a metal barrel, but honestly I don't think it'll be too difficult taking the seam out of here. And if not, there'll probably be an aftermarket company making some inexpensive barrels like that because there's not much of a shape to it other than this little 
little slope right here. So it'd have been cool if they would have put that in there, but I don't think that's a, a deal breaker. That shouldn't be very difficult to take care of the, uh, the seam on that. And here are what the, the decals look like. They're just a couple of sets of decals, as well as some photo etch grills for the top. And then the little bag right there are those metal pins that I talked about for the tracks, because they actually pin together. So you don't have to worry about gluing them. The pin works really well. I tried it a couple of times on some other Tacom kits. And it's very nice to have those. That way you're not worrying about gluing them together. And now we can take a look at the instructions. And finally, Take a look at the instructions. There's a little bit of a history on the front there. Very little, because there wasn't much going on with this tank in real life, but then you've got, of course, your breakdown of parts, and then right into the instructions, and I'll just let you take a look at those. Be prepared for lots of road wheels. Oh, that's interesting the way they've done this here. So you'll build the whole set of inner tracks just like that and then apply the outer all in one piece. So just like we thought, not too much uh, difficulty probably putting this one together here. Only 15 steps, and then it'll lead right into the different what-if paint schemes that uh, Ammo came up with. And there are four different ones in this kit. Just like that. Okay, let's take a look at the Type 205 now. And now we're going to take a look at the 35th scale Tacom Type 205 Little Mouse the Super Heavy Tank. And um, like I was telling you earlier, this is going to share almost all the parts identical to the, the kit I just showed you. So I only show you the differences uh, that make up the two kit rather than just duplicate the parts that I've already shown you. Now, according to the instructions, the what, what it's talking about is the development of this particular kit, and the real one we're talking about. The development of the mouse originally was a contract given to Porsche for a 100-ton tank in March of 42. The Porsche design was known as the VK100 uh, slash Porsche Type 205, which, was a, which is this particular one right here. Uh, they subsequently worked on it for a little while. It was approved by Hitler. And in 1943, they were supposed to have a prototype ready, but they decide to alter the plans again. And that is how they came up with the other kit TACOM just recently came out with, the Mammoth, which are, or Mammoth. So that one was like the next step in the line. And finally, they just decided, before they even built the Mammoth prototype, they would just go ahead and build the mouse, which was the, the final one. So if you were so inclined and you wanted to do like the evolution of the giant super heavy tank, the mouse, you could build this one up right here, followed up by the Mammoth, and then followed up again by the actual mouse, all of which Tacom make. And you'd have like the, the design process that they came up with to, to build this monster, monster tank. Now, like I said earlier, we will look at just the parts that are different between the two kits. And the number one main part that's different is this upper hull. You can see immediately here that the, the turret has been moved to the rear of the vehicle and subsequently the engines have been moved forward. So I guess this makes a lot of sense in the sense if you want to protect the crew because you've got this ridiculously thick frontal armor and if something can somehow penetrate through this, you also have the engines protecting. Well, at least, at least the driver and radio operator up front here, they're in for it if they get through here. But the rest of the crew is in the back here. So this is the uh, one of the main pieces that are different. And of course, because you get different engine deck, you get different photo etch for 
the the engine deck right here so those are two main parts there and the gun this gun sprue here so the gun on this particular one is a a longer barrel in fact if i'm not mistaken this is the the 128 that you could actually use a yag tiger barrel uh, i have to double check on that but i believe it is this is like the yag tiger barrel that if you wanted to get a, a metal barrel for this one right here looks very similar if it's not not exactly and then of course they give you a few other little uh variations and parts here's the little uh, ball machine gun and the other thing that'll be a little bit different <coughs> are and the other thing that's different are the decals and we won't go through all of the instructions again but we will show you the color plates because that obviously is going to be a bit different so we've got the very first one here which is in the red oxide primer that if it was a test vehicle would have been done up in that but if you do decide you want to make it as if they had actually produced those they have three of these different options and remembering this is just a beast of a tank just like the mouse it is a monster and there's some kind of cool looking late war camos that you can do on that. So there you go. There is a look at the Type 205 Super Heavy Tank. Well, there you go, guys. There is a look at these three really cool TACOM kits in 35th scale. Uh, a little thing about price. The two German kits are going to be under the $50 mark. And the Japanese kit, because of the metal barrels, is just over the $50 mark. But all three of them will be up on our website, andyshhq.com, if you want to pre-order them. Uh, they'll be up on there within the next day or two. Or actually, probably by the time you see the video, they'll probably be on the website as well there. And from what I understand, they will be shipped within the next week or two uh, on our container. And we should have them probably in about four to six weeks. So way, way in time for the holiday season. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching and please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.